today is a book review day and we are going to do a book that's a little bit different. It's not really a health related book, but it still is an edifying nonfiction book because I tend to read mostly fiction. And this year my goal was to read at least one nonfiction book a month. I am going way above it. I'm doing average of probably about three to four a month and I'm happy with that. A while back I decided to actually throw in some um, memoirs and some other things that are not health related because life is a lot more than just losing weight. So I actually finally picked up a book that has been on my radar for a while, like a long time it's been on my radar. I keep seeing it and I'm like, I need to read that someday. Yeah, someday I'm gonna read that. And finally someday came. And that book is A Child Called It. And I picked it up, it looked interesting, it was a book about a child that went through unspeakable horrors. And the book starts out and it talks about this child. He started with a what seemed like a very normal childhood. He had father and mother and they were doing activities and life was grand, everything was good until he was about four. Once he hit about age four, something happened with his mother, drinking, mental issues probably, and she started to be abusive toward him. She started to beat him. At first it started when only when his father was gone and his father was gone for long stretches because he was a firefighter. And, it st and the abuse was only then, but he, she would hold it together when the father was home. But then it slowly started to creep in further. She was starving him. She wouldn't feed the child for days. He was only getting food at school. And as a five and six year old, this little boy was starting to steal food because he was hungry. And the father at first was trying to sneak food to his son, but never stood up to the mother because she had that much control. And they were still pumping kids out at the same time. Um, so there you go. But the abuse just grew. He talked about one time he went without food for at least 10 days. He talks about how his mother stabbed him in the stomach and he never had medical treatment for it. He talks about how she would make him drink ammonia. She, one of her favorite devices of torture was to mix chemicals in the bathroom and make him sit in the bathroom with all the chemicals and fumes. Um, he, it was very abusive. And finally, at the age 12, he got out. Some teachers finally stood up and got him out. And that's where the book ends. Now, he does have the obligatory at the end, if you know of child abuse and if you have been child abused and blah, blah, blah. But the book was literally just him saying, I was abused and here's what happened. I, I guess that kind of left me a little bit kind of cold because I'm just like, it didn't really talk about overcoming. Yes, he overcame. And he did talk a little bit about how when he was five or six, he was like, I'm not going to let my mother win. I'm not going to let her see me cry. You know, and that's kind of amazing. But other than that, it was not anything about I'm overcoming it. It was just a thing of I'm living this. And I was like, yeah, it, it, it was an interesting story, but it just really wasn't a whole lot of I don't know. I don't know what was missing. So uh, maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. This is a two for one book review. I actually picked up the second book because he did a trilogy and the second book is called The Lost Child and it picks up where he left off, where he went and was put into foster care from the time he was like, what, 12 until he was old enough to not be into foster care. And this book was more the same. I moved to the foster care. I went to the juvenile home. I moved back to foster care. I was a troubled child. I did this. I was always searching for love, which I understand you would be. He was always trying to seek out his mother to try to, you know, win her love and have hear her say, I made a mistake. I love you. I've changed, whatever, you know, and it just basically follows along his woe is me story. That's my problem. It's a woe is me. Yeah. Um, and then it ends when he turns 18 and is done with foster care. He does, at the end of each of his first two books, he does put a little clip in and a little paragraph or a little bit chapter, a short chapter, about how he's now with his own child and he's, you know, doing great. But it's just a woe is me. I felt like it was him trying to get attention. 
There is a trilogy. I am not reading the third one. I'm done. It, you know, it is what it is. Um, I did look him up because I wanted to know what happened to the mother. Did she go to prison? Did she whatever? No, she did not. I don't know what happened. Now, this happened in the 70s, so maybe life was different then. She was never brought under with charges. The other children were left in her care, and another one of the kids actually also has a book about his abusive childhood. Um, yeah, the father did eventually leave the mother. Nicolay, a dollar shy. Um, and the book and online, it does reference to the fact that this was one of the worst three child abuse cases in the state of California. So, I mean, it was a bad thing. And yeah, woe is me. I, I guess I want to hear the woe is me, but I want to hear amazing feats of conquering. Not just a little short snippet at the end that says, oh, look, I'm back with my son. So, yeah, I was a little disappointing. I mean, let me know what you think. If you've read it, let me know. Did it leave you cold also? I mean, I was... I like reading different aspects of life. I can't even imagine growing up like that. I grew up in a family where love was very, very forthcoming and very, very open. I had a great childhood. You know, so I like reading different points of view in different aspects of life because that is how you learn. That is how you whatever. But the book left me cold. So let me know. Did it leave you cold also? The woe is me book? I did. I read. I conquered. Two for one. <laughs> so I am well on my way to my June books because I'm filming this in June. And um, now you won't see it till July, but that's okay. So I'm well on the way of my edifying myself. Thanks for joining me. No excuses.